Hey guys, you're back with Juzzy Evo X. Today I've got a new part for the car. It's arrived in the mail and it's some interior parts from Auto Interior Technique. So I, as you know, have been trying to install some upgrades to the interior of my Lancer Evolution 10. Recently I've done the floor mats. I've got the black Lancer Evolution handbrake, ARC gear knob, um, the black edition interior. I already had a steering wheel which was wrapped in a suede sort of non-branded item that I bought from eBay. But uh, the one thing I really wanted to do was to get some upgrade parts here to cover the sort of uh, vinyl, rubbery sort of texture of the handbrake. I also wanted to get a shifter surround uh, which incorporated the standard um, button clip there um, in matching and also to get the steering wheel wrap matching as well. So um, one thing I noticed is that by buying a suede wrap um, it was good when it, when it was uh, new but it has worn over the last oh, I think it's one to two years, probably two years and when I installed this suede wrap into my car, the instructions for it didn't say anything about using double-sided tape. So basically I just got a um, suede wrap in the mail and that was pretty much it. Just some, um, some sewing thread to go to stitch it all together. At that time I wanted the interior to look all black and now of course with all the red accents from the final edition, so as well as there, um, the mats, you know, red ac red accents on the air condols. I wanted to get something which um, was going to last longer. That also came with all the stuff I needed to use double tape, you know, to hold down the grip in the same place, but also to just to sort of be a more premium product. So um, when I take my car to the shop, the guys, obviously, they're working on cars all day. They might have... Um, brake fluid on their hands etc etc and the material has has really just sort of worn um, so what I intend to do is I'm going to be installing all of these uh, genuine Alcantara products from Auto Interior Technique today um, and whenever I drop my car off to get a service from now on I'm just going to buy a, a cheap sort of steering wheel cover that might be a little bit oversized so it slides on very quickly and just sort of preserves the material so just to give you guys a look um, I'm in Australia and I purchased uh, this from Auto Interior Technique of course it's during COVID time and I took about two to three weeks to arrive and that's understandable of course because of you know how COVID is affecting the world but it arrives it arrives safe so basically i um uh, had the team there ship it to me and as you can see here's what you get in the package when you buy these parts now there is actually um two no three extra parts that you can purchase for the interior so i'll just quickly show you in here you can actually get a elbow rest for the center area but because I've got the black edition with red stitching I opted not to but then you can also get a Alcantara cover for the what we call a cluster cow in Australia um, and you can also get one for the cluster surround um, the only problem is though is that they only make it for the left-hand drive market so um, I asked them, are you prepared to make one? And uh, they don't make it. So in that case, then I was happy just to get the shifter, handbrake surround and the steering wheel because in uh, actual fact, the interior actually looks reasonably good with the standard cluster and surround anyway. You can buy carbon covers to put over them, um, but I just don't want the reflections that come with that. So for that purpose, I only bought um, these parts as discussed. So when you buy the um, steering wheel wrap, 
it comes with a set of instructions so as you can see here it tells you about using double-sided tape using the uh, plastic tool here to sort of dip the um, Alcantara cover in, be in behind plastic trims etc on the wheel they provide you um, a decent set of cutters you can choose the stitching color that you like so it comes with a needle so that's pretty neat and uh, yep got some double-sided tape and then we come to the actual package so I've got my hand handy son here come over here young man he's gonna hold the phone for me just there and let's open the package and have a look at what's inside so three pieces we've got here so the first thing I want to talk about is this uh, handbrake cover so this one's fairly easy as you can see this is the outlet where the handbrake uh, handle slides on and then this part simply just um, tucks in underneath the OEM center console so that is probably the easiest one to install and you can probably even um, get away with installing it without removing the console if I can't then I'll just go through how that's done anyway as you can see, I opted to have red stitching on this and it looks brilliant. So the next part I actually um, uh, got was this SST shifter surround. So as you can see, it says AIT for Auto Interior Technique. And the thing that's really nice about this is that it comes with the push button clip, just like the genuine SST um, shifter cover does again it's got the red stitching and here's what it looks like on the inside just get my son to, to hold it here so as you can see the stitching is really nice it's not a huge part it actually looks quite small but yeah once you've removed the OEM item uh, you'll see um, but yeah, it's the same size. So the last part we're looking at here is the Alcantara um, steering wheel wrap. Again, it's got the AIT logo there. Nice red stitching. That's what the inside looks like. So pretty good quality. The feel is just magnificent. It feels really great. Um, it does feel um, uh, very much smooth like the suede wrap does it's much of a muchness really it, it but it it, it um, obviously is a more premium product than suede so it's got all the cutouts so that it can go around the steering wheel and um, yeah as I said it's got the tool to um, place everything neatly in there so I'm going to Cut now to installing the handbrake cover first, as that's the easiest. Alright guys, so I've got my young son helping me here. And so basically he's going to record whilst I'm actually doing the install here. So first we've got the Auto Interior Technique handbrake cover. So as you can see, this is the outlet. It's got the red rib here. And it can only go one way. So if it's like this, you can see in comparison to this way. If it's installed this way, it'll be facing up. It's the wrong way. So clearly, it can only go this way. This this side is slightly, slightly shorter. This one's slightly longer. It has got the AIT logo um, there, but looks like when it's underneath this cover, it's going to be hidden away anyway. So it doesn't matter if you buy it for a left-hand drive or right hand drive like we have in Australia application. So if you've got the standard handbrake, you'll have a chrome button here. Can you see that there? You'll have a chrome button here. And because I've actually got an aftermarket handbrake button, it just looks black, but the principle is the same. You simply just have to unscrew this handbrake button and eventually, it'll just come off the screw rod that's inside 
Now, a lot of people have a aftermarket Lancer Evolution handbrake like this. If you're wanting to take that off, then simply underneath there's a grub screw, one grub screw, and that comes out. If you've got the sort of rubber handbrake, then you quite literally just need to wiggle it from side to side until you finally get enough force to exert it off this handbrake assembly here. So you don't need to do anything else with that. Now, what you can do is if you are worried about damaging this Al Alcantara on the install, then in the back here, I'll just get you to record here, in the back here, there is, um, you might have some carpet down in there, but there's a couple of screws that you can undo. And when you undo those, that'll enable you to lift up this console um, slightly so that you've got a bit of a gap when installing into here. Now, it does feel a little bit tight, so I'll just see what happens. I'm just going to put that over. And... Yeah, to me it looks like it's it's slightly a bit tight, and I don't want to wreck it. So, we will do that. I'll just get uh, some... Um, a, a driver to undo the two screws that are in here. I'll just take that phone for a second. So just as you can see in there, there's two screws and once those two are undone, this whole assembly will come up. Okay guys, so I've just removed the two screws from the elbow area and then I've used a plastic trim tool to wedge out this part here. Depending on where you are in the world, you might have two or three of these plugs that are in use, but you basically just squeeze the little clip so that these this item can come out. After you've done that, you then need to reach forward here and use the plastic trim tool to lift this shifter surround out. Now in my case, I'm using one from the Black Edition, which is a 2017 uh, normal uh, Lancer, non-turbo uh, surround. Um, as the Evo X finished prior to that year. Um, so basically, you need to get this shifter surround away from the actual shifter itself. So here you'll see that the plastic area separates. So if you use your plastic tool to wedge in wherever you want it to separate, you'll then be able to remove the parts that you want. So in this case, as you can see, the shifter surround is now out. Now, what can happen a lot of the time is you won't be able to actually get the shifter surround to come out because the car's in park. So what you can do is just simply put the car into um, neutral to get around that. Press stop. All right, so I've got my keys here. So I'm just going to just put the car into the uh, accessories position. And I'm just going to slide it back. So put your foot on the brake, put the car into neutral, and then you're free to turn the car off. So now that it's in neutral, the um, uh, shift this around, as you can see here, it's able to come out. When it's in park, it's too far forward and you won't be able to move it back. So if we just look here, this shift this around has a plug on the front side. And once you undo that little button plug, <clears throat> then that whole surround can come up and over the shifter just like that. <clears throat> now, again, this is a black edition, so, <clears throat> but as you can see here, this part is um, unique to the SST, so it should be for Rally Art and Evo. So this actual material is, uh, in order for that to come off, we need to remove these three screws. Okay, so it doesn't take very much effort to take out these three screws. One. Second screw. And the third. Nice and easy. So now with those three screws have come out, then this part has uh, detached. So as you can see from factory, 
they actually staple that in. So it's got two staples there, two there, two there. And I'm quite surprised at that it's not actually um, screwed in or glued in. Now before I was talking about the size, as you can see, it's the same size there. Can't go wrong with the orientation because the button faces the front. So <clears throat> I'm just going to use a flathead. to sort of wedge into this area and to get that. Okay guys, so I stopped the video to actually um, make a mention here that by simply um, using the three screws underneath to hold it up against the bottom of the shifter plate actually wasn't enough. I went to go and put it in and then as soon as I put it into park, I noticed that um, the, uh, the very bottom left corner of the shift boot had come out. So what I've done is I've made it to the absolute base um, as is the OEM shifter boot. As you can see all around it just sits nice and flat as to the bottom and I've just drilled a screw hole so that I can feed a nut and bolt two on the sides and the one on the front and back. Just using a tiny little bit of Loctite to keep those in place, but um, yeah, if, if I ever need to remove it, just by using a, tight, a small little shifter, it'll come undone. Um, but that'll be enough to keep it in place. So I'll go ahead now and put it back in, and that will mean that it won't have any movement with the material popping out of the shifter base. Okay, so as you can see, I've just tightened the one, two, three screws for the shifter surround to the bottom of the base plate. Um, you might be able to see the little red uh, Loctite that I've put on each screw. And because the um, nut and bolt is way beneath the shifter base, you can see that it's not fuelable from the top. Okay, so I've managed to get all of this surround back in. Uh, let's plug my Dodson base tamp reader in. So it's nice and neat. Um, as you can see, you cannot see the screws in any way underneath the shifter. And if I put the car uh, to accessories, foot on the brake, as you can see, I've got it underneath the lower lockout ring. Lift it up, goes in the park, doesn't come out. See on the front, and into drive. So nice, nicely in store. So I can return my ARC gear knob on. And just to show you guys, hopefully you can see that. The button is uh, nice and secure there, clipped on, so that keeps that shifter, uh, prevents anyone from seeing down to beneath the shifter area. Okay guys, so I started cutting this steering wheel trim and I realized from the last time I put the wrap on a wheel that it is way easier to actually take the steering wheel off and work on it. You might think, oh, I don't want to do that because I've never done it before and I'm worried about the airbag going off. But what, even if you do manage to um, just put a wrap over it and then you start to sew it, it's a lot easier to do that when the wheel is off the car. So as annoying as it sounds, and you may not want to, I would highly recommend removing a steering wheel. What you have to do is go to the boot of your um, Evo 10 or your engine bay of your Rally Art and you need to disconnect the negative battery terminal. Then you hop back into your car, you leave the battery terminal disconnected, make sure it can't connect to the negative terminal of the battery accidentally, so put it well out of the way. When you come to your car, you'll see that your cluster, then if you've got your door open, your cluster won't be illuminated. I would recommend that you then come and put your foot on the brake, 
have a look in your rear view mirror and just make sure that there's no brake light on. Turn your lights on, turn everything on, just make sure you've got no power. By putting your foot on the brake, you discharge any energy you've got from the system. Once you're confident you've done that for a good 10 seconds, you can press the horn, there'll be no sound, great, no power's on. What you then need to do is go to your tool set and get a T3 torque screw. So it basically looks like an Allen key, but it's got a star uh, face, for better lack of a word. T3 is the right size. I've lent this to my friend. I don't have it here with me. If you're in a jimmy, you can try using a T27, but T30 is the correct size. Now, on the back of your steering wheel, and I'm just going to turn the light on here. So... Here's your steering wheel, doesn't matter if you're on left hand drive or right hand drive. In there, you'll see that there is a T30 torque screw. You need to undo that as if you're undoing a tap to the left on both sides. You'll get to a point that you keep turning it and it just doesn't seem to be doing anything. And that's because that screw is actually on an angle. So it sort of faces back towards the passenger seat and this one faces back towards the driver seat. So what you need to do is whilst you are unscrewing one side like this from behind, you actually need to pull the horn area a little bit in that same direction that you're putting the screw in. So on this right side, push it to the left. When you're doing the left side, use your other hand to, to pull this horn a little bit out that way. You'll see that once you've actually just unscrewed it without moving it, that this horn starts moving so what i'd recommend is unwind it about i don't know 15 or 20 turns on both sides then use your now, now that it's a little bit loose then you can use your hand to yeah pull pull the, the same way that you've got the screw going in there so i'll put this phone down now whilst i do that and i'll resume also another thing to note is that when you put this torx driver in um a lot of torx drivers don't have a suitable amount of length to get some leverage this is one that I got from Super Cheap Auto in Australia a few years back. It cost me something like 20 bucks for a set of 10, which included some Allen keys. And yeah, it's it's been excellent. So because it's a tight screw to get out, you might want to use on one end just a um, set of yeah, flathead pliers to give yourself some leverage to turn it because it's only that very first bit that's fairly tight. And um, yeah, then the rest can be undone by so hand. As you can see, I've just started by doing this right side first. So I was, had the torque screw in there and I was pulling it out. And as you can see, I kept gently pulling as I was undoing it and this right side's come out. So I'll now go ahead and do this left side the same. Okay, guys, so as you can see, I've now got the left side out. So left and right side are out. Now, the next thing you want to do is just gently use your hands to remove this center um, airbag part out but just realize that there are a couple of um, cables underneath so you only want to bring it out just a tiny bit like this now you need to actually detach these two black cables so there's a yellow plug here and then underneath you'll see that there is a black plug in the middle just there so you can detach them by hand don't worry I know this is very nerve-wracking when you first do it the airbag won't go off because the car hasn't got power um, you've got that negative disconnected. So I'm going to put my hands down now, but you just to give you a look at what that looks like. It's been a couple of years since I've done this, but um, you will be able to use your hands to disconnect that yellow yellow plug and this black plug. Okay, guys, so I've just managed to get the airbag detached from the wheel. So I'm just going to explain to you how these plugs work. So this yellow plug has a whole lower spring-loaded base. You have to actually pull that down and then that yellow plug simply pops off. So that's actually an easy one. The harder of the two is this black one. And just looking from the bottom, there is a black clip on the lower side that you have to use your thumb to push up quite hard. It's a quite a hard clip to push up and push back. So again, the way I did it, 
was I used my right hand. I put my hand behind the airbag and yeah, I pushed up with my thumb and then pushed it back towards the cluster. Um, took a little bit of effort and then it was off. So you can put this aside now. So this is what the airbag looks like from the rear. So that's the bottom there where the yellow plug was. Don't detach these little plugs. I don't know if they can. Don't even try to. You don't need to. So that's what the inside of the yellow plug looks like. And just in case for some reason you want to see, that's what this yellow plug looks like. Cool. So I'm just going to pop that down there. And the next thing we're going to focus on is removing this um, lock nut from the spline. All right, so I've just used a Nikko pan to make a mark on the, um, the nut and this shaft so that when it's all tightened up, I know exactly um, where I want it to be. Now, um, as you can imagine, we also want the um, steering wheel to be in a right alignment with the locking nut as well. So if you look closer, I'm just going to put a mark there as well. So if I know that that's exactly where I had it when I removed the wheel. So guys, this uh, nut here is a 17 mil. Now, um, easiest way to remove it is just to use an impact wrench with an extension. Um, you don't want to actually undo this nut all the way because the reason is because once you start undoing this nut, you then have to, that's the only thing that locks in the wheel to the spline. So um, what happens though is that once you remove the nut, this wheel is normally still not able to move and you've got to bang it from behind to make the wheel come back towards you. And as a safety, if you just undo this nut but still leave it loose on this thread, then it means you can still bang the steering wheel from behind with your fist or with a rubber mallet, but it won't come flying off and hitting you in the head. So I'm just going to try and undo this now. Just uh, loosening that there so that, you know, there's a good three mil or so of gap between the nut and the faceplate for the wheel. So that then gives me the chance to um, then, yep, pull it. So now it's loose, left to right, but it's not going to come flying off. So now that I've managed to pull the wheel back, I can then undo that nut, put it up there where it's not going to get lost. Okay, guys, so now that you've got that um, lock nut undone, when you go to feed this yellow and black plug through the hole, you'll notice that there is a third black cable. So it's just connected to the wheel here, but it has a little push on clip just there. So you can reach behind and you'll see that there is a gray colored plug there. Just push that in. I'll have to stop to do that. But once you um, squeeze that plug together like this and pull down, the wheel will be able to remo be removed. Okay, so I've just pushed that gray plug out. And as you can see, the wheel has come off. Okay, so I've removed the old steering wrap. And here's what uh, the stock wheel looks like. Now, yeah, it turns out that I did have a small amount of double-sided tape around the wheel, but I want to spend some time to actually make sure it's imperative that when you actually put your new wrap onto the steering wheel, the absolute key places you have to have double-sided tape is here. So basically, you will spend most of your time with your hand on the, on the steering wheel on both sides with your thumb like that. And over time, over a period of, you know, two years, what's actually happened with mine is that you or, or other people that don't normally use your car, they will pull here and that causes this area of the wrap to fall out. Now, what normally happens is we um, undo these screws on here and I think there's one or two on the back. I'll show you in a second. And that allows this grey faceplate to lift up. When you've got that up, then you put the, the tape down all around your wheel, not just in places like I had before. That is the biggest learning uh, mistake that I can advise you guys. Make sure 
that you put plenty of double-sided tape around this area. But most importantly, the key number one place is right here behind the area where you'd have your thumb. If you don't have any tape here at all, then when you go to stitch your vis up, what happens is there will be a ridge from here to here. And when you go to hang on to your steering wheel, then this part of your hand will constantly have a gap between um, that area because it's not taped down. So you have to have tape here. So when I install this double-sided tape that Auto Interior Technique have provided, I'm going to put that tape all around the wheel, but I'm going to make sure that I've got it here on both sides and again on the front. So this is the main area where you're going to be. And I guess when you're turning your wheel from the top, a lot of people here, so you need to make sure that it's on both sides um, across the top and here first, and then whatever you've got left, use it along the bottom. Um, I don't think I ever had a problem with it coming out from this bottom area because you don't normally hang on to here. And then I never use these buttons on here. But yeah, I do use the OEM buttons on here. But of course, because it's away from this grey area, so the steering wheel wrap only tucks into the edge of this grey part, then it never had a problem with um, making the wrap come loose. So the first thing I want to do is get a Phillips head screwdriver and remove these four screws. When you remove those four screws, that enables the back cover of the steering wheel to come off. And this allows you to have a better look at what these T3 torque screws look like. So as you can see, they're actually angled forwards. And so that's why when you go to undo the screw, you need to, you know, pull across, as I said, whilst you undo this screw and then pull that way whilst you undo this screw. So that's what the back cover is. Now, the reason why you need to undo those four to take the back cover off the wheel is because the grey part of the steering wheel is then held in by additional screws. And I think it's these four here. So I'll now proceed to undo those. All right, so I've just removed those four screws and then you turn the wheel over and you have to use some force to pull those four out. And the reason is because there are these little cylinders that go into these holes. So it doesn't just pull off. You actually have to use a little bit of force to pull that back. And then the last step is in order to take this gray part um, off from the steering wheel, You'll see here that there is a black wire um, which joins to here. So that's the last part. Unscrew that. So just showing guys, I'm just cutting little strips that, like this and then I'm peeling the yellow tape off and I'm just moving quickly because I don't want air to get to this one. So yeah, little strips at a time and then just place them exactly where you need them to go. All right, so check that out. That's the amount of tape that I've used to make sure that the whole thing has, is going to be secure to the whole wrap is going to be secured to the wheel as you can see i've got it everywhere a vastly different amount of tape that i used the last time and yeah if you look at their instructions it only just shows here but yeah rest assured that it needs to go all over the steering wheel now the problem with that is that when you go to put this wrap over the wheel and um you know, after you've pulled off all this double-sided tape, which I'm going to do in a second, that then means that you leave yourself limited amounts of room to maneuver it and get it into position. So I would recommend doing this with two people, one person holding the wheel frame correctly and the other person, yeah, maneuvering it around and getting it in the right position. The one that I've ordered does not have a center stripe at the top of the wheel. And just noticing inside here, it tells you the windshield side and the driver side. So I've essentially got it, you want to basically get it uh, in the correct position um, so that then you don't have to be moving around and worrying about it, contacting a bit of double-sided tape, getting stuck and then removing it and then that little bit of tape is then compromised. What you can do, I guess, is put a hairdryer onto um, the whole thing just before or just after you've put the wrap on. It won't really matter so much, I don't think, so long as you're not heating it up too much. 
but the more that you put a little bit of heat into the tape, it's going to help it to bond at least for that initial process. And then, yeah, once you put the car out in the sun and you park it, etc., etc., it'll it'll bond a bit further. So what I'm trying to get at here is do it right the first time. Make sure you've used plenty of tape all around the wheel, particularly around the areas where it's going to adjoin underneath this plastic trim. So, yeah, I've done it everywhere there to try and prevent any of it coming loose after you've got it all back together. You put the whole steering wheel in, you take it for a drive, and then a week later, you've got a little bit that's tucked out because either you're gripping it too much or, most importantly, there's no tape underneath to give it that bond. So what I've done is I've come back to the car, I've put the nut back on the wheel, which means the wheel's going to be nice and stable whilst I can start maneuvering this. So you want to do it as quickly as possible, and you want to try and get it as... Um, centered around the wheel as you can so i'm sure for the guys that do this at auto interior technique or you know upholsterers they may look at this and cringe a little bit but doing this to the best of my ability which i know that a lot of you guys that are watching this video will be intending to do the same as well so um what we've got here i notice immediately is that there's way more overlay in material so that it can't fall out and become a problem. So there's so much material that it is, it is literally coming right up to here. Yep, so I've noticed that there's enough material pretty much coming all the way in. So when I look all the way around, it does seem to be pretty good now. So I've got the, the um, plastic tool um, with me, but what I'm basically going to do is just like this, just very gently bring that around. I'm going to move this face plate out and tuck the material underneath on both sides and at the bottom. And then just slowly, very slowly, make my way around all right so now i've laid the wrap around the wheel and i've just done a test position placing this gray fascia back into the points and so uh, it looks a little bit rough at the moment because the thread isn't hasn't tightened any of it around and there are some tiny little parts where I've seen a local shop that has had a professional get it done and you just inevitably can't get rid of every little crease. But we try my best. Basically, it's a, it's a um, process of pulling back, kneading it down, and just trying your best to try and um, flatten out any of those creases. Um, but... Inevitably, you can't really do it perfectly, I guess, until you've got the thread through. So here's the instructions that I've got. Turning it over, I'm just now going to get the thread um, that was provided from Auto Technic here Interior, and I'm going to start threading it through. Okay, guys, so we're back somewhere around... Oh, Two hours later, it's the most mind-numbing thing you can do to um, pass time. But, yeah, it's all complete and, uh, yeah, pretty happy with it. Just takes a long time to, um, yeah, basically get it all straight, uh, reapply and sort of knead it out so that you get as less lines as possible. So I've put the grey faceplate cover back on. I'm now just going to screw all those parts off that I just talked about a moment ago and do a reverse installation in the car. All right, guys, so we're back in the car. And as you can see, I have um, put the 17, 17 millimeter nut back onto the spline, just lining up the Nico mark with the spline, the nut, and the faceplate on the wheel. So the next 
thing we do is we get the black and the yellow airbag plugs connected. I've always also connected the black plug at the back there, just ensuring that that black plug is screwed back on so that it is earthed. So I'll plug these two back in now and then we'll get the faceplate carbon fiber back on. All right, so all three clips are now connected underneath the, or behind the airbag area. I then put the two um, T30 torque screws back in. Um, the horn has a flat um, mount to this wheel, so it's not crooked in any way. Both screws are tight. So the next thing I'll do is I'll just apply a little bit of heat to the back of this um, carbon trim and then just mount this on. All right, so everything's back together. Really happy with the outcome. So now this, uh, I think that pretty much completes all of the interior upgrades I wanted to do to the car. So just to recap, we've got the Auto Interior Technique Alcantara steering wheel cover with red stitching with no center stripe which is the way I prefer it the handbrake cover as well as the SST shift cover so all up that was probably about three hours worth of install um, yeah can't wait to take it for a drive now and just see how it feels. I can already see that the steering wrap has a smoother feel than suede. Um, because it's brand new, it doesn't feel like it's got as much grip, but I know that that'll take a couple of weeks of driving for it to sort of bed in and um, I'll be able to give an update at that stage. So yeah, really happy with the outcome. I hope you've enjoyed this video guys. I think I'll keep my previous video up that showed how to install the steering wheel because and, and probably link to this one as well. But uh, if you'd like to purchase these products, you can just do as simple as I did. Visit on Instagram Auto Interior Technique. I'll put a link in the description and you'll be able to view any promotions, their website and their products to have a look at what sort of products they've got available for your car. Certainly for my Evo 10, I've been happy with the products. Um, it only took about two and a half or three weeks to arrive in Australia, which is normal for USPS Priority Mail, I believe it's called. And uh, yeah, hopefully you agree and you um, have got something out of this video. If you've got any questions, please feel free to message me on Instagram or here on YouTube. And uh, I guess I'll see you next time. Have a great day.